Hey guys, welcome to Management Matters, Paragon Intel's weekly show all about what happened this week in the world of management. As always, you have our CEO, Ty Popowell, and myself, Colby Howard. And Colby, getting right into our proprietary management track research, we identified this week an interesting data point on tractor supply. The CFO of Tractor Supply sold far less stock than he typically does this time of year and far less than he typically does when he has the opportunity to sell stock. We identified that uh, two clients that we thought it might be indicative of a pretty good quarter for Tractor Supply, and it was. They had a beat and a and raise, a pretty interesting data point that the platform picked up. Uh, next, Curate Retail, we released dossiers in our first four interviews on the CEO there. Link in the show notes here, but you can grab it off of management track. Also want to highlight Bill Campbell, our director of research, and I did a call this week on Bed Bath & Beyond CEO Mark Tritton. Um, really interesting data points. There's some really, really high and, and uh, big strengths with Mark and some, some weaknesses as well. First time public market, uh, public company CEO. And we dug deep into sort of his background at Nike, Nordstrom's, and Target, but definitely worth a listen on that as well. And then lastly, we have a number of interview packs coming out next week on the CEOs of AutoNation, Cerner, and Sunrun. So look out for those. And then I want to get us started off on podcast. I know I've been, you know, beating this drum for a while, Colby, but I love the solar wind situation. And we really like CEO Rami Krishna. And I would just highlight, he appeared on another podcast this week the Force Point podcast, kind of a cybersecurity industry podcast, not widely disseminated. But I think the point we would make, he's clearly doing a publicity tour. He's acting as if the crisis is behind them. And I think he's showing a lot of confidence in the future of the company. And I would say two things. One, based on our interview work, we don't think he would do this unless the crisis truly was behind them, unless he really did have that confidence. Um, and, and we just think it, it just shows how good the situation is. Um, and we, again, we think really highly of him, one of our top three long ideas. What other podcasts did we see this week, Colby? Yeah, there were two that really stood out. One is fascinating conversation between MSCI CEO Henry Fernandez and Calster's CEO, Chris Allman. And they were talking about the very controversial area of ESG investing and actually what Calster's have been doing with fossil fuel divestment. Now, the teachers of California should be relieved. He believes his priority is still returns. Now, he did talk about <laughs> how in that context, how do you enact social and climate change? So dive in there to see how one of the largest pensions is dealing with a lot of this social climate. You also had the microchip CEO, Chairman, or sorry, Chairman Steve Sanghi. He joined a panel on a podcast called Moore's Lobby with two other chip manufacturers. It's a podcast made for engineers, as nerdy as you can get. If you want to deep dive in the weaves and the, on the chip shortage, this is where you should go. They talk about the anger of not being able to get parts. It only has 17 reviews on Apple. So if you want, one of the, if you want to be one of the few people that has this information, this is absolutely one of the few you should listen to. And on the video side, the William sonoma CEO, uh, Laura Alber, had a great conversation she sat down uh, with one of the Salesforce execs and talked about her start of the company and the uh, decorative accessories, starting out as a buyer for the catalog. She started Pottery Barn Kids when she was pregnant. She became CEO. How did she turn it into a digital first retailer during the pandemic? Definitely something worth looking into. And then Facebook is worth noting. I thought Zuckerberg made a heck of a lot more of appearances than he actually does. And I thought CNET wasn't a real media organization. I was wrong on both fronts. Zuckerberg doesn't make many appearances and CNET was the one who got this interview. He spent a half an hour with them going over how social media is just a part of Facebook's future as they head to the metaverse. And with this whole name change future they're going through, this was actually a really interesting conversation to look at. And I know, Ty, there were two videos that stood out to you as well. Yeah, the two I would highlight is Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan appeared on sort of a random British American Business Council video. It was an off the cuff conversation. He spoke a lot on inflation, Gen Z banking kind of trends and initiatives and giving who he was speaking to, um, you know, a little bit on, on London and Brexit. Only 33 views on the video. It was I think it was almost an hour long. Definitely worth a look. 
Um, and the last one I would highlight is there was a really awkward HubSpot internal video that they produced. <laughs> it was about their transition from, you know, Brian Halligan had a, a, an accident and then he stepped down and, and passed the reins on to the new CEO. And this was, I think it was pseudo scripted. It didn't seem like it went that well, but they still posted it on YouTube. I don't think it has a ton of views. Worth a look if you're involved. Um, but I, it wasn't to me super confidence inspiring necessarily, but I, I would take a look at that if you care about HubSpot. And with that, this is the weekly Management Matters uh, video with Paragon Intel, and thank you for joining. See you next week.